What up, what up, what up? Bankroll Tim bedded up. Got the Malibu up on the lift. Front wheels are only off of it due to getting these other cars in and out underneath of it. But what we got going on here is that old style setup I was telling you about where somebody went and welded this whole side together and it was just to fix it to get it here. But anyways, so this car, I done what three years ago three and a half years ago you can tell things are different if you really pay attention to what i do now from what i did then oh um, but he has new double adjustable uppers red new double adjustable lowers red and an anti-roll to go in there red, oh no that's black but the anti-roll obviously we cross members in there boom so set up the anti-roll, set the, you know, put the tabs on, all that. So I'll have all that on there, which this bar, that's crazy that I put this bar in front. Normally I put the bar, the cross brace, always, I always put turns the back. But, oh, you know, these are 12s, so that's why. So I use 10s now to keep the distance shorter. To keep the distance shorter, I use 10s now. Um, but with the super drop boxes and stuff like that, I would use a 12 on G body, but I'm all the way up here, which I can go down to three holes. So I can set the ass end of the car down. What the fuck? Oh, they unloading the shit next door. That's crazy, sound like gunshot, don't it? The ramp of the truck. Anyways, <clears throat> this car is another one of those cars. I did not tub it. It got tubbed by uh, McBride's and, uh, Joliet, Lockport, what, Crest Hill, whatever the hell it is over there. And the tub job is fine. You know, I went over there to give him some pointers, stuff like that. Uh, but the body, one of those times, look at the gap right there. There's no gap. The body is all the way on the frame that way. Now keep watching. There's no gap, right? Now watch this side. Look at that. Boom. So that's why sometimes when you guys are putting wheels on cars, one wheel would be sticking out more than the other, even with stock control arms. The stock control arms keep it basically centered unless you have a bent arm or something fucked up. But you can see I'm riding a three quarter spacer on this side. No spacer on this side to keep both wheels exactly with the body because the body is that way. Everything on the rear end is built square to the frame. So why would you, you know, put the brackets on the housing an inch and a half over this way on both sides to correct it or vice versa, blah, blah. Why would you do that? You wouldn't do that. So body guys and stuff like that, the car obviously at one point either came off the frame or somebody changed body bushings maybe, let's see. Um, it looks like stock up in there to me. But yeah, see how close it is to the outside? Because the body is pushed over to the driver's side. Now, does it stay the whole way? I think it's better towards the front. But these are some things you guys gotta look at. Oh, this side's tighter, so you know, but it's way, I mean, this is a fat ass gap back here. So, anyways, that's all that's it. This, this is in here for, which I should have already had done. Boom. The Buick has been done. I'm twisting the front end up a little bit more for him, which wasn't part of the deal. All that it was doing with this car was coilovers in the back. It's got a nine inch in it already. So the coilovers, the cross brace, the anti-roll. I ended up measuring it up for a drive shaft. I ended up trying to fix shit underneath the hood. The car doesn't want to stay running. It shuts off. like. Like if you just move the car and just like you turn the key off, but you don't touch nothing. It just dies. It doesn't like idle down, idle up and then die. It just cuts off like it cuts the MSD right off. So I got, I had a whole day messing with trying to keep the car running this and that. All the fucking hoses were loose under the hood. So these mechanics out there, uh, what the, what's going on, bro? Parts changes. What's going on? You can't do simple shit. Anyways, so I'm adjusting the front end up some more. They got coilovers in it already. The front sits a little low and rubs the fenders in the front. Um, 
don't know if I'm gonna be taken care of, but you know, time is money. The edges of those fenders could be cut off right there, you know? That's how squared it is. It could just be cut on an angle, boom. That'll help that out 100%. I mean, the car looks good when it, it's on the ground. Oh yeah, see, I centered up that rear end real good. Always go a little bit farther forward than back. And when your suspension travels correctly, it goes straight up, straight down. You guys can see that flake, right, in the paint. Got a lot of flake in it. There's some spots on it that uh, need to be fixed. I had to pull the bumper out because this bumper shot is jacked up. So it kept pushing back in. So I had to pull the bumper shock out and then I had to put a little weld on it to keep it out. And now, if it needs to come out anymore, he can space the bumper shims out some more. But the top, I'm pretty sure it was, how do you say it, Harris Upholstery in Plainfield. Uh, they did the top. I think they recently did the top, I think. I don't pay attention to, to a lot of the stuff out there, but some stuff I do, which obviously, I mean, nice ass top. Looks like it's done good. It got dirty where it was at and it got dirty over here, but that's what we got detail shots like that over there for. Hopefully it doesn't pick up that music. But anyways, uh, the Pontiac, the Pontiac is going right on this lift and getting tore apart. I keep letting people call me and talk to me or I keep answering the phone when I shouldn't be. So the Pontiac is getting on the lift. And again, my kid is gonna rip the suspension out of the front so that way I can do the suspension in the front on the Pontiac, boom. But this one, a couple hours, whatever. Yes, I know a couple of people have seen that, which when this arm broke, the rear end went forward and fit right here because this is my old sway bar setup, which the, it, they didn't start breaking for years. Like this one went three years without breaking, boom. But this is one of the cars that I had let him know. I'm like, oh, we got to change your shit. And then, of course, it was like fucking, like I said before, a couple weeks later when it broke and did that. But both sides of the car, I mean, you know, I think it needed a little more clearance there anyways. But he's got a body guy that painted it. Like, see, this side was, this side had hit a couple times. But Malibus are, Malibus are known for the passenger side right here if you look at the distance between here and the tire even on a stock car if you got to get out of tape measure the pattern side is always tighter a lot of the g bodies are always tighter over here and then when you build the rear end square with the frame square you want everything to be square so the rear end is side to side or on an angle people want you to line up and make this gap the same if the car was stock and you can't make the gap the same because then it makes the rear end sideways in the car so then the car is going down the road and, you, and it's dog tracking so the ass end of the car is over this way or over that way vice versa blah blah, blah. and if you got a steering wheel that you can tell if the steering wheel is centered and the steering wheel is not centered then you think your alignment's off oh yeah look this is this is an older frame notch which like i said this is three years ago look at this frame notch compared to what type of frame notches i'm doing now this still even looks better than a lot of the step notches where they cut a piece and cut a piece, move it back and plate it and then your tire turns and hits the edge right here. You gotta get into this lower control arm bracket. But as you see right here, this is a big thick ass plate that wraps around for, for strength. Um, the hole is actually, huh, it's filled in, but that looks like a stock stamp, like it was never cut out from the factory but normally there's that hole in the frame but i do them way way nicer now you guys see that shit i'm the i'm the king of uh frame notches being the smoothest and i'm not afraid to show my work not afraid to show my work at all this is an old style fucking notch that i used to do and you can see i didn't take too much time i mean there's time but there's not but this one overlaps more than that side nowadays when you guys see my shit you see i got markings before i cut it out and all that so that way i keep everything the same so my distance from here to here i would mark on this side where i'm going to cut it then i'd transfer it to that side the passenger side so I, i'm so i cut out the same area the same way that's the center of the outside edges <clears throat> i want to get right back on this 
and finish it up. I gotta finish up this notch on this side. Boom. This one really, I mean, it takes a minute. You know, cars don't always go in and out, in and up. You know, Sammy's has got that uh, box Chevy over there. They, they're frame notching and all that. And they got a whole crew over there. And that car, if you guys pay attention, it's been over there for a little bit because it's a big ass job. Big ass job. And I'm just one person over here. So, but they be knocking them out. I wish I had a reliable crew like that. But anyway, thank you, Tim. That it up. Justin, that front end up. He's coming to get that Buick right now. I'm going to get this Malibu buttoned up so we can get the hell out of here. I got to let the car down right now because I forgot all the parts inside of it. But, uh, get that shit put together. Boom. And as soon as the Pontiac. I could probably get the Pontiac front done 100% in the next, in the, within the next week or so. But I got to bounce around from the Pontiac and the line dog so I can get it out of here. But like I said, uh, the Buick right here basically paid for rent for next month. So that way I can take the first week of next month and just focus on the line dog. Still got to get the back seat out. So got to get anything in the trunk out. Um, the tubs are in the box back there. I got to form the tubs, but once I cut the tub out, I'll have my measurement where I want it and get that thing tucked. The wheel with back brakes are back there in the box. Fat ass, fat ass look wheel, boom. The rear end, yes, it's just a little rear end, but it's gonna be all fabbed up. Then later on, when it's gonna have super drop boxes, all that shit on it, all that shit will be cut off. It's gonna be totally cleaned up, put together, welded up, fabbed up, and that rear end will be ready for somebody to be able to buy later. And then he can upgrade later when uh, putting a nine inch in the car, depending on, or, when he, yeah, this is a stock motor, stock 305, blah, blah, blah. So there's a lot of things right now, like a dry shaft would be different, you know? So anyways, it's, it's gonna be built up, fabbed up, boom. It's gonna be fine for what he's got going on. Even when he puts the motor in, he can still ride it, cruise it, stuff like that, do burnouts, whatever. But the only reason you would need to put a nine in it is if you're gonna go racing and stuff like that. You're on the street, uh, tearing it up, shit like that. I don't know if anybody remember the big blue uh, box on 32s, uh, Dexter Boyd. Uh, the car sitting over there at 815. It's like a purple color now. That car, when it was blue, I did it on the 32s and it's got a big block Chevy in it with a seven and a half rear end. Motor axles, uh, 456 gear, stuff like that. But uh, it was tearing it up. He was spinning the tires, big block, got a lot of torque, boom. Never had a problem with the rear end. Still to this day, that's what's got in the back of the seven and a half rear end. But it's the blue, well, it's purple now, but it was like a blue like this. Uh, maybe it's a lighter blue than this. But anyways, seven and a half, everybody wanna talk shit. A lot of people out there don't have nine inch money and the people that don't have nine inch money meaning um they're not going to be going to the track they're not going to be racing they're not going to be putting slicks on it uh stuff like that so a nine inch is overkill for stuff like that when you're cruising and you want to go out every night and you want to go cruise to town and go to car meets and stuff like that uh a seven and a half is fine you can still spin tires with a seven and a half. So yes, I know sometimes I say they're junk. Sometimes I say this, it's all in how it's built. So a cruiser with no power, you don't have to put a nine inch in it. Nine inches are expensive. You guys are seeing quick performance and stuff like that. Uh, nine inches with brakes, this and that, $2,000 or whatever it is. You're getting housing and axles. They're not telling you that you still got to buy the pig, the third member, which is what the gear, the posi, and the bearing kit is all set up on. 
that piece right there, shit, you're talking what, 13, 14, 17, two grand, depending on what gear, depending on the, the quality of gear, depending on if it's a posse, if it's a locker, if it's a spool, what splines, you know, you got what, 28 to 40 spline axles. So 28, 33s, 35s, 40s. Then if you want them gun drills and this and that, I mean, the price just goes up and up and up and up. By the time you're done, you got five grand. $5,500 in a nine inch rear end. Everybody thinks, oh, I'll go find one in the junkyard, this and that. Now you gotta have somebody fab it. If it doesn't have years on the top, then you gotta have somebody fab it and this and that. So by the time you're fabbing it and putting it all together, boom. Even ordering, you know, ordering it with the brackets and everything you want on it, narrowed to the way that you want. You're still, I mean, you're talking big dollars. So if you're racing and stuff like that and you're going out and it's crazy. Oh. Somebody pulling in. Sounding good. You know what? Let me catch some. Oh, yes, it is. It's that $100,000 box. Oh, yeah. When you hear real power, you come outside and you see real power. Oh, shit. Had to, had to cut that straight killer off, huh? <laughs> Look at that. Y'all heard that coming down the road. Man, I hope it don't pick up this music in the background. The only music I wanted to hear was this music of this motherfucking motor. But yeah, oh, man, I hope it don't pick up that damn music. I'm trying to talk over it. But yeah, there it is right there. That, that 100K. <laughs> Oh, let me go back in here before this damn picks up that damn music. Come cut this shit, man. All right. Big Lou over here putting some hoes together. Look at that. He always got something black in his hand. <laughs> All right, y'all. Bankroll Tim bedded up, but boxes and boxes of parts. Yeah, y'all seen that LSMC in the background. That's not the one. That's a, that's a hard top, but uh, it's got parts here but it ain't getting touched until after the Pontiac is getting done so it's gonna be a couple weeks all right and then Donzel man I gotta I gotta I'm trying I'm trying but all right y'all they don't tell better it up appreciate y'all and I'm out <laughs>